this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to be working on the needle bar system of a Singer Model 1591. This, um, this system and the needle bar is pretty easy to work on. It has a couple different features. Um, it's kind of got that, that tricky little uh, needle clamp jib inside the needle clamp that we have to be careful of. And while uh, most of the needle bars on vintage machines are held in place by a screw in the needle bar connecting stud in the front or even on the side, this one the needle bar is held in place by a set screw on access from the back of the nose on the machine. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll be, I'll be showing you all those things. I'm going to take the needle bar out and take all the pieces off and of course I'll be cleaning them and then I'll show you how to put it back in and set the height. And setting the height on this needle bar is one of the easier ones um, compared to many that I've done. And unlike a, a presser bar setting the height, uh, this this one is a much easier because it has the uh, familiar timing marks uh, grooves etched into the needle bar. So to start out with, I'm going to remove the needle since I don't like getting poked by it. And I'll put that aside. And then um, a lot of a lot of people would start taking off the needle bar clamp and so forth because the needle bar is going to be removed up through the uh, connecting stud and right out the top of the needle bar bushing here. But I like to leave that on in case the needle bar is stuck inside the connecting stud because then I have something to hang on to and try and twist it and and set it free <laughs> okay so let me get the machine turned around here so that I can work off of the off of, every time I pick this thing up I really <laughs> I think about how heavy it is <laughs> so when, when you're looking at your machine you're gonna see a hole right back here uh, in the center of this uh, back of the nose here and that is an access hole to get to the set screw uh, the problem is to get to it you have to line it up you have to line the set screw up with the hole okay so to do that you're going to put the uh, needle bar down to its low point Okay, and this needle bar connecting link that connects the connecting stud to the thread take up cam back here should just be a straight up and down parallel with the needle bar. And that puts the needle bar at its lowest point. At that position, when you come back and look in the hole of behind the nose, you should see the head of the set screw sticking out of the back of that uh, connecting stud. So you will find yourself a good uh, size bit to, to get in there. And uh, you have to kind of find the slot in the screw by just by feel, <laughs> because with the with the screwdriver bit in the hole, of course you can't you can't see the uh, the the set screw. Once I get that locked in. Uh, I'm going to use my little mini ratchet that came with my Chapman screwdrivers to get in here and turn it. 
All right. Finally got the screwdriver bit into the set screw. And I'm going to try and keep it there while I loosen it. This one's not too tight. Now, uh, you don't have to take the screw all the way out, but you have to back it out pretty good because uh, the set screw is in a flat spot that's ground into the needle bar. And I kind of like that actually because it makes it easier to set the height. But once you get it loose, if, if you can move the, oh good, if you can move the needle bar up and down, you know you're out of that uh, flat spot, okay? You don't need to take that screw out all the way. Now, as I said, the, one of the reasons I left this in here is because sometimes the, the needle bar is stuck in this connecting stud. Uh, because oil has dripped down in there over the years and if you have that uh, sometimes just using the thumb screw to twist this back and forth can get it free move it up and down and twist it sometimes you can put a couple drops of uh, fresh oil or alcohol uh, something to soften that oil up if you're worried about getting chemicals on the finish of your machine, you can use a heat, like a hair dryer, to loosen that up. Once you see that it's loose, now we're going to just go ahead and we'll take off the thumb screw. Okay? So right on the center of it here is the, the needle clamp position screw. It's a small screw that goes through the needle clamp and uh, screws right in to the bottom of the there it goes of the needle bar, and they call it the position screw because it's it's set up lined up right to put the needle clamp in the right position uh, compared to the flat spot on the needle bar. So here is a very shallow, <laughs> look at the threads on there, there's only like two or three little threads on the end of that little screw. Uh, it, it, it's, I can only see two or three threads and there's a little nipple that sticks out that goes into the hole of the needle bar that I'll show you. Now, we also have inside here is a, uh, that jib I told you about. And it's a jib thread guide combination. It has a kind of a little hook that comes off of it that the needle thread goes through on the way to the needle. So it won't come out while the, this is, the thumb screw is on the needle bar. So I'm just going to keep... I'm just going to take this thumb screw all the way out. How's that? Okay. And we can run into the same problem. This, the needle bar clamp can be stuck to the needle bar. Uh, same thing, old oil and gunk like that. So if you have trouble with that, don't worry. If you, if you take that positioning screw out of the front side and the thumb screw out of the back, it should come off here. It should, should come off. There we go. Okay. And you can kind of see the top of that jib right there. I'm just going to pull it out. So this part is very typical Singer <laughs> uh, needle clamp. And, and We've seen this before on a few Singer models, right? There's like a, a puck of steel and this little curved um, thread guide. 
okay and that puck sits in a space behind the thumb screw sits down in there like that and then the needle bar holds it in place and when you're pushing turning in your thumb screw it's pushing on that steel puck to, to clamp the needle okay so don't don't take this off and throw it around without uh, capturing that jib and the thread guard okay so now we've got the hard part done and you should be able to start sliding this up right out the top of the machine if it starts dragging anywhere it could be because there's gunky oil on here and the clearance in this uh, connecting stud and especially the clearance in the in the bushing up here is very close very tight so if you got little bumps and grunge of, of oil and stuff on here it can get stuck so don't try and force it if it doesn't come up and out smoothly then you want to take like a, a rag and put some uh, alcohol on it and and rub and scrub and get all the get as much of that bumpy old oil off as you can now hopefully yours is going to be smooth as silk and it's just going to push right out up through the bottom bushing and up through the top needle bar bushing and it's just going to continue right on up out like that okay so this one is in pretty good shape uh, there's that little hole I told you about that the nipple on the uh, position screw fits into to hold the needle bar from twisting around you see that little round space that's where the puck on that jib sits in there okay now very tight in there is a little steel pin you can see the shiny end of it there that pin is called the stop pin let me grab let me grab that needle back here and most of the needle bars have a stop pin I don't think I've talked about it before but it's so that when the needle goes in and you push it all the way till it stops that stop pin is what it's called that stop pin stops the needle at exactly the right height so you you put your needle in and they push it up all the way till it stops and you'll be at the right height okay I've never taken one of those out um, it's actually a separate part with a part number but I've never seen one missing and I've never seen one fall out now here is that flat spot on the back of the needle bar I was telling you about and you can kind of see a shiny spot in it where the set screw from the connecting stud screws into and, I, and I, this is one of the I, I don't remember seeing this flat spot on another needle bar and I, I like it because when you get it set up right and the set screws in that flat spot to me it means your needle bar is going to be lined up uh, perfect and there's not much uh, uh, room to roam for that set screw when you adjust your needle height you can see that's that shiny spots right up at the top so to me, when I put this in and put the set screw, I'm going to push the needle bar down till I hit that set screw and say, okay, that's the, that must be the right height. But we'll still check it. Uh, can you let's see? Oh, there's some of the grungy type stuff I was telling you about that can, that can get you hung up in there. And you don't want to bang on a needle bar. Uh, you know try and hammer it loose or anything like that because they will bend 
Yep, there's got the singer name and a, and a uh, part number. And right here are the two bands. They, they call them the timing marks. The, actually, the top one I like to think of as the height mark. Use it to set the height of the needle. And then the bottom one is when you're setting the timing. But they're there. This will clean up real nice. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay. So, with the needle bar out now, um, you should be, and we've got the clamp off and the clamp jib and thread guard and the needle bar out, uh, we should be able to pull out the uh, connecting stud. Should just slide right out of the connecting link. Oh, look at this. The whole link fell off. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's because it's a little dirty in there. It was catching. So let me put that link back on. And you guys just pretend that it didn't come off, okay? So that in a little bit when I show you how to take it off, you'll say, Oh, that's how you take it off. <laughs> okay. Play along with me, will you? Okay. So here is the connecting stud. Right? Needle bar goes through it. Here's the set screw that you loosen through the, through the back there. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. But, you know, when you're tightening that, it goes into the flat spot on the needle bar and clamps the needle bar in place at the height you set. So we can take that set screw out. Of course it's kind of a long one, right? Because it has to get up in there like, like that. Mm -hmm. It's got a big head on it. So we'll get this cleaned up nicely. Okay, then, now, <laughs> let me show you how to take off the connecting link. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> okay, this connecting link actually confuses me a little bit. You know, this is, this is where the, that uh, connecting stud sat, and this loop up here goes on to uh, this connecting link hinge screw up here. See this screw right there? That screws right into the take-up cam. Back here that's usually called the counterbalance. On this system it's called the take-up cam because the take-up lever is connected to it. See that? And when we have the take-up lever on the front, you know, there's all these parts and linkage and everything. Well, this just screws right into this uh, take-up cam. So when I do a video of that, you'll be seeing that. But I don't quite get why the top of this connecting link has a clamping screw. Because if you put that on and you tighten the screw, then it it can't it can't hinge. And like when it goes up like that, it'll just get stuck. So I'm not sure why they have why they just don't have a loop up there like the other machines I've seen before, just have a kind of a loop of metal. So my only thought was, uh, they, they don't have a oiling port for that either, but my thought was that maybe this also works on another model of Singer uh, where it does tighten and does clamp on a hinge screw and they just use the same piece for this machine. Honestly, I, I that puzzles me a little bit. But, you know, it's okay. That's how it goes on. And it has no fear of falling off because when 
when your connecting stud is in here like that and and it's on the the uh, connecting link hinge screw and you'll your needle bars through here it it can't it can't come off nothing can come off because the needle bars through here and just holding it in place right hmm. so got that off and uh, gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit uh, I'll probably uh, I know I'll brush this out it's another uh, bushing here that's open at the top the way the uh, presser bar adjusting thumb screw was but I've seen a lot of needle bar bushings open at the top and I've even seen them where the needle bar comes up and down through the top okay so that's not too surprising but I wanna I wanna try and maybe use some q-tips uh, uh, take a smaller rag dip it in alcohol and shoe shine it through there to get because when I see this this uh, grungy old dirty dried up oil on there that's usually a sign that there's some of that same stuff in here okay so I'm going to clean the parts and uh, get it ready and then we'll come back and I'll show you how easy it is to put it back together you already got it figured out I'm sure and then we'll set the height and we'll we will be all set to go ooh look at my clean parts yay so I, I cleaned all the parts I just use crud cutter you know but uh, use whatever you want and I brushed out the holes and and degreased them and cleaned them all off dried them with a hair dryer and then I've oiled all the parts just a light coat this oil on my fingers and rubbing it around just a light coating of oil before I put all these clean parts back in I, I did want to clean my uh, needle bar bushings more so I was able to put a cloth down to protect my finish and take a uh, strip of cloth from an old t-shirt dip it in alcohol squeeze out the excess now I had brushed this out real good with a stiff bristle brush but this just makes me feel a little bit better like I'm getting any residual gunk out of there okay and then I also uh, I gave the bushing a little shoe shine with that alcohol to get any gunk off of it and I wiped down my uh, take up cam too this had some some old residual oil and dust and stuff in there so I feel pretty good I'm getting everything back together here uh, I am going to pre-oil the bushing with a little bit of oil to uh, get get that lubricated and uh, putting that dry needle bar in a dry dry bushing can be a little stiff so I'll just oil those up a little bit okay so I guess the first thing I'll put on is that uh, the connecting link with a set screw clamping screw that I don't understand why they why they do that but uh, it does go on like this with this uh, smaller shorter end to the back and the clamping screw off to your right here I'll get that on the on the uh, hinge screw for it and then uh, I see I'll go ahead and get that kind of pre-position straight down and I'll take my uh, connecting stud right and uh, if I go ahead and 
I'll go ahead and put my set screw in there. Kind of get it started. I don't want to start it far enough it's going to block my uh, needle bar. I'll get it started in there. And I don't uh, recognize any difference in the way it sits up. Sometimes you can tell especially on a zigzag machine or a swing needle machine but this looks the same to me either way so I'll just stick it in my connecting link okay and then I'll drop in the needle bar uh, from from the top mm -hmm. well, it goes nice and smooth and I'll get it in through there and down. Now sometimes this can be so slick now it just falls through. But uh, my flat spot which I'm going to have to turn around to the back, right? So let me kind of get set up here to show you when, when we're going to do this now. We're going to turn it so that this flat spot ends up in the back of that connecting stud. Right? So when I put my screwdriver in here now and tighten it, that set screw will go into the flat spot. Has to be that way. That's the only way it can work. So let's see if I have my uh, screw in position here. Is this a good angle for you guys? I'm just going to finger tighten that set screw now to kind of hold that needle bar lightly in place because I can set the height on it before I put the needle clamp and all that stuff on there. Okay, so just just barely I want to still be, be able to manipulate the needle bar a little bit. See, but that's all it can move. So my screw's in that flat spot. And that's all it can, that's all it can move up and down. <laughs> so, and that's what I meant about this will, uh, the, the needle clamp will be lined up then automatically, I think. So to set the height now, uh, remember there's two uh, timing marks etched in. And the top one I like to call the height mark. The higher mark is the height mark. And the lower mark is the timing mark because you're timing it in the lower part of the machine with the hook. And that top mark should be right up to the bottom of this bushing with just a little sliver of silver showing below the bushing. You have to see that timing mark and you have to see it up near the bottom of the bushing. So let me show you a picture what I'm talking about. Okay, then when you're there, you're going to want to tighten that screw. I'm going to tight, tighten it as hard as I can with my finger so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my screwdriver or our ratchet or whatever you can get in there. I need a set of stubby screwdrivers, don't I? Of course, you don't have too many needle bars that are set up like this one. Okay, so let's see if I can hold that for a minute and get my ratchet on there and just give it a good clamp down. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I had my uh, connecting link and the needle bar. Uh, connecting stud as low as it will go that's that's how you 
position it to set the height and then I'll just double check and yeah I can see my top mark up here below the bushing and uh, just a just a little bit of silver above the timing mark before the bushing okay so I've set the height that was that and as far as I know we'll find out but I've set the you know on the other with the screw in the front you've got to kind of twist this around to make sure that you get your needle clamp lined up uh, properly uh, with the hook and the feed dog and everything and this you don't really have to I don't think yeah. okay so I know some of you are saying uh, now what about the timing mark <laughs> So this really isn't the timing video, but I'll explain it to you if you're anxious about that. Uh, once you have your height set on your needle bar, you're going to turn the hand wheel towards the front of the machine a tiny bit, just a smidge. And the timing mark, the lower mark, now bring it up to where the height mark was. So in other words, just up parallel with the bottom of the bushing but before it goes into the bushing and when you do that you should be able to look at your needle down at the hook and the the, the hook point and the needle point should be perfect behind each other the point of the hook whoops sorry this is the point of the hook <laughs> this is the needle it should be, you know, right, right there. Not the the hook shouldn't be past it, and the hook shouldn't be before be, before the needle. Okay, it should be like right behind it. Okay, and uh, I so here I'll just I'll just barely turn this. You'll see if you can even see it move at all. There. Did you see how little that moved? See? Just the space between those two marks. Now my timing mark is there. The needle should be at the hook point. Okay. So I hope I hope you didn't fast forward past this, but let me tell you, uh, every every machine can be a little bit unique so you might have set a dozen of these needle bars for height with that top uh, mark just barely below the bushing and then set the timing and the timing it's it's not right you're skipping stitches okay so what change it change the height a tiny bit and then retest the timing height needle point to hook because there can be a very small variance in a machine and um, a, a difference in distance up here a, t a small amount like you, you didn't really get down and look at it too close when you set the height you said yeah I think that's it then you then you bring up the timing mark and then you look and you set the timing like that and then you skip every fifth stitch or something uh, go back and adjust your your height because it's shocking to me how a, a tiny small difference can make a big difference in the stitching okay what I ha will say I have found to be consistent is whatever the distance from the height mark that you set to the bottom of the bushing the timing mark setting should be the same so if you think that you're like a 64th of an inch below the bushing then you want to turn and get the timing mark up there that exact same amount as close as you can to that 164th if that's what you feel it was okay now 
I'm confused about this machine because I've read that you can't change the timing because the, the hook and the shafts are set with pins, not screws. So, the, like, you can't mess up the timing, so there's no reason to reset it. But then I also read that you can reset it uh, by changing the height of the bushing around. If somebody played with that, you can reset. And also by changing the hook uh point what they call a shuttle point and spring <laughs> so i don't know which if any are maybe all of those are true but i'm just telling you the height the normal okay setting the height of the needle bar and setting the checking it with the timing mark Whew. okay i think i i think i escaped from that maybe <laughs> so let's let's talk about now the uh, the needle clamp and that little uh, jib that goes in there. Mm -hmm. Now I couldn't see a difference in the needle clamp for up or down. Uh, I know like on the 301 one side of this is different than the other and I figured that out. This one seems the same. So, uh, there's scratch marks up here from having attachments on the machine. So, I think I'm going to just arbitrarily choose that to be the up. I'm going to raise my needle bar up. <clears throat> and now I've got to set, I'm going to start my thumb screw in there. And I've got to set this little jib and thread guide in there. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna try and just set it right in there. And then that that thing I called the puck kinda goes into a recess back there. Right? And it sits in a little recess where the thumb screw is gonna be. So I've got it in there, and what's wrong with this picture? The thread guide is blocking where the needle bar is going to go. <laughs> so I couldn't put the needle bar in, right? So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to try and switch that around 180 degrees, and put that in. And now, it looks like there might be room for my needle bar to go through. Okay, and my puck is sitting in there. So I'm just going to see if I can slip that on. Oh, look at that. It pushed the jib right out. Yeah. I had this before on these machines with this jib. Darn it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> and of course, since I put a little bit of oil on everything, it's slippery as all get out, right? <laughs> Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Mm -hmm. Hey, oop. Oh. I'm better with the little right hand thing here. Okay. So there's that. So maybe if I can just try and hold it up there and get it get it wiggled on. Hey, look at that. So I'm going to push that up as far as it'll go. And turn in the thumb screw quite a bit so that it won't fall off. Right? And it's still a little bit loose, which we'll fix in a moment. But what I wanted to show you is that this, uh, hmm, will this show up on my cheap little camera here? I wanted to show you that that 
loop is out in the front here towards the suest, towards the front of the machine. And the tail's kind of over that way. And when you get this set up like that, when you when you push this all the way up and turn in the thumb screw, what you'll see is right in the hole of the needle clamp you will see the little hole for the little nipple of this little uh, set screw that holds if I can get it out of here that holds that needle clamp uh, position <laughs> screw Whee, that's a little tiny guy isn't it let's see if one of my little see if this little one here will Help me get that started. Oh, okay. So I might have to, I might have to loosen that thumb screw so I can just wiggle this around a little bit and see if I can get it started. There we go. Don't want to force anything. There's only like two or three threads on there, so you don't want to, you don't want to damage any of those, right? <laughs> And then once I have it seated, I'll just give it a little snug up. Not real hard. It's not going to go anywhere. I don't want to damage anything. And then I am in service with my needle bar. So, and I'm just going to oil it right I'm just going to uh, put a drop of oil here and uh, see pretty sure that I saw an oil port hole right there at the crank turned over to the left there's a, a oil porthole right there that is for uh, oiling that uh, connecting stud right so just go in there and just one drop of oil is usually all you need I put two little drops because you know I just cleaned everything off of here and then I'll put a drop on the bottom of the needle bar here and let it run down into that bushing. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. I'm going to wipe up any excess here. We don't want that gathering lint and dust. Mm-hmm. But what about oiling the upper needle bar bushing? Yeah, what about that? Okay, so here's the deal about oiling this uh, presser bar bushing, the upper bushing for the pre uh, um, for the needle bar. Sorry, I was thinking pressure bar because if you saw my pressure bar video, you know that I found a part was missing and it was a like a little piece of felt that uh, uh, goes into that the uh, thumb screw up there to hold oil and I had ordered a couple of uh, firm felt cords from McMaster car because I wasn't sure of the size and I ordered a quarter inch or two eighths and then I ordered a 3 8 And it turns out that the 3 8 was a tiny bit too big, but went in okay and works okay. But the quarter inch was too small. It was too narrow a circumference. However, there is a missing part on my needle bar system. There's supposed to be an oil pad that sits up here in the top half of the needle bar bushing and uh, 
it's about twice as big as the presser bar one, which was a quarter inch. The needle bar bushing, I believe, measures out to be about a half inch. And I was pleased to find out that, oh, and it's uh, technically it's part number 125274, the needle bar bushing oil pad felt, for those who care. And it turns out that the quarter inch is the right size to, to get down in there. So I cut off a half inch piece of this, which leaves me plenty of spares. And I did the same thing as I did on, on the one in the, uh, in the presser bar. And I uh, soaked it in oil. And so now I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of the excess oil. Now this comes in white and gray, they call it. And the white is not quite white, it's kind of a, a muslin color. And this, you saw the gray. And this is 85% felt versus the uh, 95. But again, it'll last a lifetime up here. So I'm just going to put that down in there. And I'm going to raise the needle bar up as high as it will go. Uh-oh, looks like it might be a little too long because look, it's, it's pushing out the top there. So I guess my measurement was a little bit off because you don't want that sticking up all the time, right? So let's see if I can... Let's see if I can snatch that out. There we go. And I'm going to trim off a little bit of this. And uh, there we go. Then I'll put it back in here. And now I'll make sure with the needle bar up that that's still recessed down in there which it is. So that won't be popping up, but it will be in there to store oil for the needle bar bushing. So to recover again, to cover it again, the standard um, oiling when you go to oil the needle bar here is the little oil port on the connecting link to keep that bushing and the connecting stud oiled since there's you know movement metal on metal there's the one drop on the lower presser bar edge there and then that'll work down into the lower bushing and keep that all oiled and then the final drop will be up here in the top of the needle bar bushing to go and soak in and whoop, soak in and through that firm felt cord and migrate down into the bushing to keep that lubricated. So isn't that pretty now? Look at that. They're all clean, it's smooth. I got it adjusted to the right height. I got my needle clamp jib and thread guard, uh, thread guide in there, all ready to go. So that concludes the video of the needle bar system of the Singer Model 1591. In this case, named Ike. I like Ike, huh? Good looking little machine so far. Long ways to go though. In the description below the video, I will put a link to the McMaster Car Firm Felt Cord page for anybody interested in some nice felt uh, pads or wicks used for oil or grease. And uh, you can see the different sizes and different lengths and so forth. I'm trying to remember. I think uh, I think this was a dollar 
20 a foot, dollar fifteen a foot, you have to buy five feet. So thank you so much for tuning in the video about this pressure bar. I hope you felt it was worth your time. Maybe you learned something. And uh, I hope you liked it so much that you'll come and watch some more of my videos in the future. Okay? Take care.